Doesn't matter whether it's your wife, doesn't matter whether it's your mother, doesn't matter whether it's your father, doesn't matter whether it's some random brother or sister in the masjid. You're not allowed to harm each other. It's haram. The Prophet وسلم, he said, Muslim and Salim al Muslim and Lisani he wayadi. That a true Muslim is the one that I don't have to worry about him talking bad about me. I don't have to worry about his hand or hers. I should feel safe around my Muslim brothers and sisters. You should feel safe around your Muslim brothers and sisters. You shouldn't have to fear being around anybody in the Muslim community. The Prophet وسلم, he said, Whoever sees an evil, he should change it. Rather, I should rephrase that. Whoever from amongst you sees an evil, he must change it. is a command. Amr lil wujub. It's a mandatory commandment from the Prophet ﷺ that when you see something going wrong, you need to say something. Doesn't matter who you are, especially if you are in a position of authority. You have an even bigger responsibility. Everybody in the Muslim community, we all, we all want the chair. It's the disease of the Muslim. Everybody wants the kursi. Our countries are all messed up because everybody wants to be on top. Everybody wants to be the next Musharraf. Everybody wants to be the next Mubarak. And we see it in our own communities. But when you take a position of authority, when you take a position of responsibility, it's exactly that. It's a responsibility. And you need to live up to that responsibility or get out. When you see somebody doing something wrong, The masjid is not the good old boy network where we look out for our people and we cover things up and we make sure nobody hears about what's going wrong because we don't want anybody getting in trouble. At least not our boys. This hook is going to upset some of you. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care. I've been threatened before. I have. I've been told, you know, with threats of the FBI that, you know, Imam Nick, your khutbahs, you need to tone it down a little bit. You need to sound more like Omar Suleiman. Do I look scared to you? Because I'm not. When something is going on that is wrong, somebody needs to say something. And that's what we're going to do. Like it, don't like it. Tawakkal Allah wa rizq Allah Ta'ala. And the Arabs understood that. But somebody might say, right, you know, we don't want to talk bad about our brothers and sisters. Right? Aghiba. We're all afraid of backbiting. When it comes to doing the right thing, as for making ghiba on any other occasion, oh, it's our sport. We're good at it when it comes to reporting somebody who's doing something wrong. Ah, you know, we don't want to reveal somebody's faults and all that other stuff. What Islam are you practicing? Where in the world did you come up with these concepts? We're going to protect our people. Our people are the ones who not only say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah but try to implement it. We all have faults and shortcomings. But certain transgressions need to be put out there. So there actually are situations where you're allowed to backbite against brothers and sisters. Six of them, in fact. Somebody wants to come for your daughter's hand in marriage, you better ask all those deep, in-depth questions. And this is a business contract, so the person has to tell you whether this person's a scumbag or they're a good Muslim, and they pray or they don't. Mashallah is not sufficient. Mashallah, good brother. When you need a fatwa from the Imam, Imam, my husband's hitting me, I don't know what to do. Well, I know the sister and I know the husband, but it's not backbiting. Just trying to figure out how to solve your situation. When you need to go to the authorities, 
because somebody is a harm or a threat to the community, whether it's the congregation or the community at large. And you have no ability to stop the situation yourself. Just in case anybody got confused. You say, well, brother, we shouldn't be saying this sort of stuff. Let me tell you, this happened before. We had a problem with the youth, issues with the youth. Got some kids getting involved in drugs, getting shot at, stupid stuff. We have kids that want to leave Islam. And people got mad at me. They say, hey, why are you talking about our dirty laundry? So we can solve the problem. Not keep pushing it under the rug because we don't want anybody to know our problems. How are you going to fix them if we don't even acknowledge that they exist? So again, no. I'd like to apologize to absolutely nobody for what I've said or what I'm about to say. You can't harm another Muslim. That's haram. And if you see something wrong, you need to change it. You need to speak up. You need to say something. Why? You were the best of people sent forth to mankind. Why? Just because you believe? No, because you do something with that belief. You command people to do good. But you also stop people and order people to stop doing evil. In whatever form that may come in. If you see something, you gotta say something. If you know that something wrong is going on in the community, you need to stand up and speak up. Don't give me this nonsense about all oh, the politics and you know it's too hard and too difficult and well thank God the Sahaba weren't so spineless. Otherwise the dean never would have reached us. Oh you gotta fight and all this other stuff, you know. I'd rather just sit next to my palm trees. Just in this room we got what, a thousand, two thousand plus people? Ninety percent of you aren't even members. So when it comes to making changes, say, wow, I'm helpless. Well, you ought to change that. Kulu kuli hadha, stop for Allah, welcome. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, ajma'in. I know, you're all like, where's he going with this? Came to my attention the other day that an elderly man in the community was molesting children in the masjid. I'm not going to be quiet. Because I can tell you if that was my child, Wallahi, I'd have broke every bone in that man's hands. Just to start. Now, some people scared now, right? Should be. Because it's a felony! You want to go down the route of the Catholic Church? Turn a blind eye? Oh, we didn't hear about it? Even though it's been reported more than once? Supposedly. Let's just all hope that this is just a big bad rumor and I can get fired for making a big deal out of it and let's just move on. Let's hope. I really hope so. Otherwise, it's a problem. I hate to tell you that no, this is not going to be a fun chuppah. We already saw it wasn't. And I hate for every single mother and father who are going to have to walk out of this masjid now thinking, did anybody touch my kid? And I feel the pain of each and every single mother and father in this room, in this masjid right now that's got to go home and talk to their children about what is and isn't appropriate for somebody to do to you. And if you're a child or you're a teenager and somebody's touching you in a way that you don't feel is appropriate with their hands or whether they're kissing you or hugging you too much or doing any of that stuff, you need to report it. And if you happen to be privy to this information, you need to report it. Especially if you hold a position of authority in the masjid, be it an employee or a board member. Unless you're okay in aiding and abetting a felony. Go look that up. It ain't no joke. So, I'm going to tell you right now, I did the right thing and I went to the police this morning. 
I ain't got no shame about it. Because reportedly one child, then a second child, then a third child. How many more do you want to wait for? I hope you understand it's okay for me to be upset. You can't execute the, the punishment. So you need to go to somebody that's able to put a stop to it. Not reportedly, make sure they leave the country. What are you afraid of? Backlash? It's not like you're the imam giving the khutbah and you got to worry about somebody trying to fire you over making something out of something. Now this can't go on. Whether it's true or not true, there is no, oh, let's deliberate, let's investigate. Let me tell you something. I learned very early on in my Islamic job career, when I was in Boston, the police, the FBI, and every other law enforcement agency does not like you trying to do their job. When you're aware of a crime, you need to report it. They do the investigating. They figure out what's right or what's wrong. Not you. So brothers and sisters, look, everybody has faults. Everybody has things that they do wrong. But when your sins are transgressing against somebody else, that's where we've crossed the line of like, uh, you know, look the other way. You drink an alcohol in your house, you don't drive a car, you don't bother anybody but your liver. It's not my business, man. If somebody's inappropriately touching people in the masjid, true or not true, somebody's got to say something about it, somebody's got to report it. End of conversation. It's a felony. Y'all know what a felony is, right? You will never get a job again. And then go look up what happens to the people that A, don't report it, B, even worse, if you're found trying to cover it up. Say no joke. So as I've said in the beginning, I'll continue to do. I'm not going to come up here and just talk about stories. I'm going to talk about the pressure points in the community, about the things that are going wrong. Because nobody else seems to want to do it. Just want to come in and apply for the imam position. Great community, wonderful community, your awesome model community for America. Look, y'all did a lot of great things. We did. The masjid, the school, all of these things. But when there is an issue in the community, I don't want to hear somebody come to me afterwards and say, hey, you should have let us handle it this way. Your way sucks. Straight up. Nah, he's our brother, or he's from our tribe, or he's from our country, or we don't want none of this. No. Not on my watch. Brothers and sisters, in no way, shape, or form will I hold the child or the parents accountable for anything that may have or did happen or could happen in the future. But this whole idea of I'm going to drop my kids off at the masjid and walk away because it's just a place for them to be babysat by whoever is here and there's nobody here is a bad idea. You need to be active in your kids' lives for so many different reasons. First and foremost, because it's your responsibility to raise these children. Second of all, because life is hard and there's all sorts of crazy stuff that can happen to you. Like the situation that reportedly happened in our center. If you don't have a good relationship with your child, I can't imagine the trauma that a kid is going through and how much they don't want to tell anybody about what happened, how much they may feel ashamed. And if you don't have a positive relationship, communication with your kid, you might never know anything is going on. That's a problem. Brothers and sisters, I really don't know what the result of this is going to be. I really don't. Of what the person did or didn't do, if they're still in the country or not in the country, that there'll be charges pressed or not pressed, if I'll still have a job on Monday, I don't know. But what I do know is that sometimes you got to take a bullet for the team. And I consider you my team. And if I got to take a bullet because I'm worried about if there was one child, two child, three child, how many more could there be? 
And how many more would there be if we don't address these types of issues that are in our community? This stuff is wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. And if somebody does it, it has to be reported. If we know about it, we have to report it. We got to clean up our own mess. We don't want to wait for it to get out of hand. You think the news articles right now are problematic? Could you imagine? Because we like to gossip as a community. It's just unfortunate, but it's true. And so if you didn't hear it from me, you're going to start hearing it from other people, other people, other people. It'll get out eventually. And at some point in time, you might have somebody who finds out that it was their kid. They're going to go ballistic anyway, and eventually it's going to get out there. The right thing to do, not because of the legal, legal repercussions, but because it's the right thing to do. We need to do the right thing is for us to jump in front of it and say, no way, not in our center. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you donated. I don't care who your child is. I don't care who your father is. We don't tolerate that nonsense because we're Muslims. And it might not have been my child, but it was my little brother or sister. And we need to start looking out for each other. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify our affairs. And I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get each and every single one of you involved to start rectifying the affairs of your community and not just come here to pray and leave. اللهم اغفر لنا وافعنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكينا عذاب النار اللهم اغفر لنا وافعنا وارحمنا اللهم اعتك رقابنا من النار اللهم اعتك رقابنا من النار اللهم اغفر لنا وافعنا وارحمنا وارزقنا الجنة الفردوس الأعلى بغير السعب ولا أذاب اللهم اغفر لنا وافعنا اللهم اغفر لنا وافعنا اللهم اجتبنا من كيد المنافقين وفاسكين اللهم اغفر لنا وافعنا وارحمنا وكينا الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله So our title of Taras was Taqimu Yerhamakum Allah, Straighten Your Lines, Fill in the Gaps. Brothers in the hallway, if you can try to fill up any space that's in the main prayer hall, fill up the line in front of you before you start another row. So our title. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنكرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى وليسرك اليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي السهف الأولى سهف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر شرنا يا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله This, uh, this issue, I think, need to be addressed. I, I hope all the brothers will stay behind, inshallah. I can't even talk right now after what I heard. And this is very serious. We're here, we're here in America. We have a lot of issues outside of this message. Each father and mother is worried about their kids in this country from multiple things, multiple sickness, multiple illness outside this message, right? The last thing we want to hear is that these illnesses are invading us here inside this masjid. This is not the place for this and we cannot tolerate anything like that. We need to make sure we take this illness out of the community. Hiding things is not the way to go. If we're trying to cover up, that's not the way to go. We need to stick our necks out of the sand and stand up and solve this problem before it gets out of our hand. Where can we take our kids? Where can we take our kids if that happened here in the masjid when we bring them to the masjid? Who would even think about that? This incident, this incident happened over two weeks ago. Over two weeks ago. Okay? 
So we need to know exactly what the board is doing about this. We need to know what the steps that have been taken and what the correction plan for this problem. And the last thing we want to hear is that someone is messing up with Imam Nick. He's a voice who need to stay here in this masjid, okay? Thank you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa Dear brothers, can I have you all sit down please? This is the house of Allah. Let me just remind you. Let me address this issue, inshallah. Please, just give me, give me a few minutes, inshallah. Just sit down. You don't, I know some of you are uh, upset about this news. First of all, I want to thank Imam Nick, Jazakumullah Khairan, for uh, bringing this issue out. Um, this issue was reported to us about one or two weeks ago. And uh, we did the investigation from the masjid. We could not uh, prove it, but we brought the intention uh, to the parents. And I think there were two parents who came forward. So I'm just, I'm just coming out uh, and telling you what, what I know at least, right? And then the uh, uh, security team did the investigation. They could not find anything in the cameras, but they did go back and consult uh, with the families and made sure that uh, there was an issue. So they brought this to the attention of the families as well as to the uh, family of the concerned individual. We were not able to talk to the person, uh, to the elderly uh, uh, brother that Imam Nick was referring to. So uh, at the, we, we, we talked to the parents first. We talked to the parents as the guardian. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, we did not, we, we did not, okay, we did not, not, let me just finish. We did not, not report it to the, uh, to the police yet. What we wanted to do was handle it first with the parents and make sure they're okay. And then, no, no, we won't do the police job. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry? Right, so, so that's the part we're still working on, inshallah. We'll, we'll, we'll inform them, inshallah. So, no, we, we took, we, yeah, Imam Nick, by the way, thank you for it. Um, you, and, and regarding Imam Nick, the question came up, there is no fear on um, anything for Imam Nick, there's no repercussion. The, he is our brother and he always brings these issues out and we appreciate him for it. So I just want to thank you, Imam Nick. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if there was slowness, if there was slowness on the part of uh, the management or the shura or anybody here, that was definitely not intended. We will bring it to the attention of the authorities. We have always worked with the authorities in such matters. And you know in the past we have done that here. We have faced the consequences of doing so even from our own community. And we have done that here. So um, don't think that there is cover up here. I know there is allegations of cover up. I know there is issues of cover up. There is a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, how should I say it, uh, misconceptions out there, right? And if you know one year back, Okay, I stood here with Ustad Noman in the night, okay, and we came out and we made an announcement and the reverse thing happened when we went public. The reverse thing happened, brothers. So there's no right or wrong. There's only the right way that we think, that we know of what Allah has given us, that we're, we're going forward with that. Sometimes we look to be slow. Sometimes we look like we're making the wrong decision. You know the case of the Imam that we did last year. And, and um, you know, we faced uh, the same kind of uh, repercussions here in this musalla, right here. You are, some of you were there, you remember it, okay? But there was no cover-up there. There was no cover-up there. The, the, at the time, people came to hit us in this musallah. Okay, so brother, brother Noman had to be escorted out by the security. When he made the announcement, I was there with him. So... No, 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 we said everything. I don't know if you missed, but I was here in the... Yes, yes. We, we said, no, 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 no. That was not part of the cover-up process. We were under, yeah, yes. Hold on, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So, yeah. He's, no, no, he, he is our brother. He is our brother, yeah. So, so if there is slowness, if there is slowness on our part, I apologize for that. But definitely there was no ill intention. Uh, the brother here is my witness. I was reported that he was the witness when I was here in the morning, one day after Fajr, and then immediately we took action. 
the mother was the one I spoke to and the mother and you know what the brother said what the mother said the mother said I don't want this to go out for my own family and and that night we also tried to reach back to the mother we could not so we want to make sure we yes can I just finish this okay okay all right so anything uh, uh, yeah Get back to them. Yeah. That's it. There's nothing else you can do. Okay. There's a second salah. We don't want to delay second salah. If you want to discuss Imam Nick, you can say your last few words. We can go out, inshallah, and we can talk about it. That's not a problem. I don't want to delay the second salah. There are other Muslims here. Uh, that's okay. Sorry. Sorry. That's fine. That's okay. The brothers have a point, and we should acknowledge that. Thank you. Salaam alaikum. Uh, Brothers and sisters, one of the problems that I have with this situation, and again, I wasn't... I said one of the problems I have with this situation is that the right was taken of somebody who is vulnerable. It's not the position anymore of the parents to say, well, I don't want my child's rights fulfilled. And what I find infuriating is the report that there were individuals from this masjid who met and came to the conclusion that it was okay for the suspected perpetrator to fly out of the country. If this person touched anyone inappropriately or molested anybody, if that is a felony, and we should in no way, shape, or form do anything except for immediately alert the authorities that there is a potential felony because that person is absolutely without any shadow of a doubt in front of any court a flight risk. And if we helped that person in any way, shape or form, I don't know what the legal ramifications are for the people that were in that meeting, but I don't think it's very good. And that's my point. Those people, if this turns out to be true, those people in that meeting, I, I, and I've already sent the, meeting, the email, they need to be removed. That's it. Thank you. I'm sorry, what? Whose names? What meeting is that? Okay. 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 I, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. One second. So, I, I, do, I think I know which meeting you're referring to. I was not there myself, but I do know of the meeting. Uh, no, no, no. I know the names. I know the names. I think I know which meeting you're talking about. But let me address that. So, so in, the, in the meeting, in the meeting, there were, there were people from the community who came forward. There were people from the uh, child's family who came forward. And then, the, like I said, the elderly gentleman, nobody met from, at least I did not meet him. I don't know if anyone from the community met him, from the committees met him. But they did meet the family, uh, one of the brothers who was the family of the elderly gentleman. And then at that point in time, uh, you know, when they informed, we asked the parent, what do you want? We asked the parent, what do you want? At least this, that's what I understood. And the parent said, I don't want this person coming in the masjid again. We said, fine, we'll take our actions uh, later on. But for right now, we want to make sure this person does not come back. At no point did we tell them that you should leave the country and we'll cover up for you. That was definitely not the intention. Why you two weeks? I'm sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. If, yes, yes, yes. The police, listen, yeah.